wrote a blog and he's always been a great travel companion. On the topic we are working on today, here, now, on the open science culture, open knowledge, the open code, public code, open code, etc. Specifically, the reason, the specific reason to have him here today is why, as culture counselor, when we presented the democratic digitalization plan, we spoke about this morning, the family, the NixNet, to start doing the DD development and to have this Congress to design content and to jointly create policies. He was Councillor of Education of the City of Barcelona and it's basically thanks to the fact that he's accepted the digitalization plan that finally we have been able to develop DD. And the conversation we held with him was very different to other previous discussions and they were not understanding what the problem was before. And Joan Subirat has worked on this problem, so he perfectly understood the problem that we want to solve and the very important need to solve it. So we have not requested him to do an institutional appearance, such just a presentation such as Florent, Gale and many others, a person who knows this topic and from his experience can explain where we are and how we can make headwind towards democratic digitalization we're talking about today. Thank you very much, Joan Subirat, for being here with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Simona. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for the invitation for having me here today, here with you, in this Congress which has a program I have been reviewing and I think, well, I'm sad I cannot be there personally because there are many topics that are truly relevant. See, when I was saying now that for many years, I believe there's a group of people and we're talking for many years now that we've always discussed this idea of technology as an instrumental and utilitarian tool and from the perspective I've been working on we've always talked about or discussed the importance of the politicization of the digital discussion or debate to know how costs and profit is distributed, who are the winners and who are the losers regarding each one of the solutions that are apparently presented as technical or neutral for many years now. I have been saying, and Simona has also heard me say this, that internet is not a new hammer. Internet is not a new hammer that we have in our hands to do a better work, handiwork. It's a new world of social relationships and same thing hap say, same thing is happening in any environment. Artificial intelligence too. This is a general goal such others that have been here before, the steam engine for instance, that transforms cities. Well, this has happened with internet too, and will also happen with the distribution and evolution, sorry, and the development of artificial intelligence. That is why it's so important. The fact that it's not accepted as a simple improvement, the fact that some great technological platforms enter the scene offering services to the educational system in a free way, and very comfortably solving, apparently solving many problems, but somehow hiding all the political load this not-for-profit supply of technological platform has that facilitates the educational world. It's obvious 
that new technologies or old technologies, if you wish, they are a transformation, a positive transformation from many standpoints. For instance, what we're doing now or what happened during the pandemic with the use of online or many elements that have taken place represent a spectacular change but to make this a problem and always politically talk about distribution of costs and profit winners and losers is a practice that seems key and so with Simona he came along to the city council to propose this uh, beginning of a project stemming from um, associations of mothers and fathers and schools who were concerned about also this disembarkation of platforms in schools and favored the development of this work and that somehow This brought not only the debate of what is the most useful platform, but how these platforms are governed, who is the beneficiary, who controls the data, how is this information stored in the common use uh, sphere. And at the same time, it's also important, and this is a concern that Simona has always had, to avoid the fact that institutions favor this, the uh, city council or any other institutions, this does not prevent from also with the conflict that we have with great editorial companies that control journals and that will have control on what is said in magazines or journals and that make you pay for these articles and information. I think that the European Union and the European Commission is preparing a report. It was presented last week in Santander along these lines and it is obvious that this will create tensions, obvious tensions, because the limits between scientific research and production of knowledge with open code or open source and also enabling data. This is important. In research, we are very much used to the fact that many researches are done on databases that have already been used and that have not been shared. So it's not only about sharing the outcomes of our research, but also the data that has generated the research. This is very important and for sure will end up meaning problems between the scientific field and the more um, dissemination field, of course. This is something that we will see for sure because we know that um, knowledge is something that is there and uh, ownership of data is also generating many problems. And second topic, in fact, we started yesterday an open course in Santander, Menendez Pelayo University, on citizen awareness, which is the capacity to include citizens in the production of knowledge. There's a very powerful community here in Spain. In fact, it's the first position in Spain regarding citizen networks very far from what we see in the US or UK currently. So it's very important to promote this experience and logically from the standpoint of research, we should award the fact of working with citizens. We've always talked a lot about the distance between scientific knowledge and changes in the behaviors of people when you include people in the definition of research and in the process of research itself, the capacity to change behaviors is also much greater because there's this process of sharing not only the problems but also the process and therefore the outcome when the you and other organizations financing this talk about the dissemination of research, they are based on the hypothesis that there's a clear separation between science and citizenship, whereas 
um, citizen science wants to include the citizenship in the process. And the third aspect that I would also like to mention is regarding everything related to artificial intelligence. There's this logic of relating these technological things to technologists and engineers. However, we're increasingly seeing that only through interdisciplinary logics and reasonings we can approach the problems of these technologies that also require humanism and social sciences and that um, is related to all these technological changes. Some people say that Europe has lost the race in terms of technological innovation, but for sure, Europe still has many possibilities of being powerful globally from the standpoint of the regulation of the debates of rights and the winners and losers and politicization of topics such as artificial intelligence. These are the aspects that, from the university perspective, we need to work on to break down the reasonings and logics of the different areas, which is this fragmented logic of science that has many problems. There's this quote explaining this. Society has problems and university departments. Well, basically here we have this very situation. Artificial intelligence brings forth cross or interdisciplinary barriers and this requires um, different ways of approaching them. So these were the comments that I wanted to make. Thank you once again for the invitation, Simona, for being here celebrating that what we talked about a long time ago with Simona is now up and running and waiting to get to know the results of this Congress that I'm very happy to have participated in. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much, Juan. We are letting you off. We know you have a lot of work, so we will continue. Thank you very much, Juan.